Walpole Film Festival started in 2003 as one of the first high school film festivals in the country. The program has been recognized nationally as a model for creativity and collaboration in the classroom. Students in the program are required to follow each step in modern independent digital filmmaking. This includes screenwriting, acting, art direction, shooting on digital cameras, editing on professional software, and composing original music. The festival culminates each year with a red carpet ceremony that celebrates the achievements of each crew. To learn more about this year's Walpole Film Festival and how to become a sponsor, please visit our website, walpolefilmfestival.com. Thank you and enjoy the movie. Okay. You click battery. And you scroll down to battery usage. And if you click the clock, you can see how much time you spend on each app. So, last seven days? Yeah. Oh, 7.3 hours. Yikes. <laughs> Tara Gordon. My name is Jess Ferguson. Hi, I'm Kira Healy. I'm Annie Dolan. And I'm a director in this year's film festival. So for our documentary, we are looking at the effects of cell phone. Cell phone. Cell phone. Cell phone use has on high schoolers. And within our documentary, we are doing a social experiment on ourselves. Our crew is going 30 days without using our cell phones. From January 31st to March 1st. This is a great opportunity for us to look at what we've discovered about cell phones and actually put it to the test. We put all of our phones, there's four of us, and we put our phones in a locked briefcase. And so basically we're not gonna see our phones for the next 30 days. As directors, we're invested in this experiment to see as teenagers ourselves, the effects that not having it and having it have on our lives. We talk about the overusage of phones a lot in society. But at the same time, nothing's changing. Like it's still, we still use it more and more every day. So I don't think it's talked about enough. I think that through doing this, we could kind of shed light on this issue. And we probably, people aren't gonna stop using their phones, but maybe they'll kind of see the issue and work to almost better their own lives. Social media is important to me because I like how you can just see the content of other people. I don't really focus on what I post as much, but I just like to see what's going on in people's lives sometimes, it's cool. Throughout high school, I've started to see social media as more of a way that I can express myself or share things that I like. There are some people that base their entire lives off of social media. For me, I like to use it just as like a way to like express myself. I like people knowing like something, like little things about my life that like I trust. Okay, I use Snapchat the most. Yeah, it's uh, Snapchat. All right, so the first one's Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat. Snapchat. Snapchat, yeah, Snapchat. I'd say it's one of my main forms of just communication. I like it because you can send pictures, videos, and chats all in one and it's just really quick and easy to use. I use it like probably every 10 minutes of my life. Like, it's bad. I think one of the things that makes Snapchat so addictive and keeps people coming back all the time is probably the feature on it called Streaks. Snapchat Streak, it's like when you send back and forth like pictures to someone over like a extended period of days, it becomes like a streak. And then you have a streak of days and then some people get upset about it when it ends. People send streaks just because um, most people can't be bothered with most people they Snapchat and it makes it easier just to have like a set period in the day where you send streaks and then you keep those streaks going. It's a bottomless speed. If you scroll on Instagram, you can scroll and you can scroll and you scroll and it, it doesn't stop. And that keeps you coming back. So I think Instagram's a very impersonal way of expressing yourself. 
But like there's another feature of Instagram, a lot of people will make a second account and they call it their Finsta and it's just where they post a lot more personal information about themselves. So basically, a Finsta is an account on Instagram which we, you use to post all the things which you would never at all remotely want to post on your real account, your Rinsta. Like it is more of like a diary, like a modern diary. If you follow someone's Finsta, you probably know a lot more about what's going on in their day-to-day -day life. On their Rinsta, they'll post more like edited photos Everyone wants to look like they're having fun on Rinsta. <laughs> Are they really having fun? I don't know, look at their Finsta for that. I've had social media in the past, but I always find myself deleting it. And honestly, I'm not sure why I do it, but a lot of people have social media to express themselves and to connect with friends. But I just, I just don't find all the positives that people do for some reason. One of the young women that I spoke with I tell her story in the introduction and the reason why I, I did is because she articulated something that I heard from just about everybody in some way, but she did it in this really succinct way. And so what was interesting about her was she sort of had the perfect life on her college campus. All she talked about in her interview was how bad social media made her feel. And she said, you know, even though she knew, like, and, and I heard this from so many students, everybody's lying, everybody's only putting their best pictures up, like it's not real, it's so fake, like everyone felt like people only put up their most beautiful pictures, like their most amazing experiences, like you never hear the downside. So she said, even though I know that that's all people are doing, and that's all I do, um, whenever I go online, it's like the worst version of me versus the best version of everyone else. Yeah. I think a lot of people are bothered by the Instagram models and like what people look like on Instagram and how they portray their lives to be so perfect. And I think that that kind of makes you feel bad about yourself and second guess everything that you're doing. People just take out their phone whenever to take a video of something. When something even like remotely interesting, they'll take out their phone and record it on Snapchat. I like being connected with all my friends because if I wasn't on Snapchat, I would feel like I would like never see them. Every day, um, I at least do one, like, hey, here are all my streaks, gotta get that out of the way. I put an avocado emoji in front of all of them so I could basically take one picture a day and send it to maintain the streak with everyone. A year or two ago, I remember going on a vacation and I would give my Snapchat password to one of my friends to make sure I kept my streaks. I had about 62 Snapchat streaks. I didn't think it stressed me out. Now that I don't have those streaks anymore, I could tell that it actually did stress me out, just even a little bit. I'll get like texts from my friends, not on Snapchat, like saying like, answer the streak, we have the hourglass. And then I go right on and answer. I think some people definitely um, see, look at their followers or say how many Snapchat streaks they have, things like that, and use that as a reflection on how popular they are and how many friends they have. I am with my friends and we like do our makeup and get dressed up in a certain way and take like 400 pictures <laughs> just for one Instagram and then um, I spend like a good amount of time on Visco editing it. You don't want to look bad on your Instagram for other people because you want people to think like you're hot. I think one of the strangest things about Instagram and I feel like we've all been guilty of this at some point whether it was in middle school or now like a lot of people will take a picture and they'll blur out their acne or they're white in their teeth because God forbid they put a not perfect picture on Instagram. Like when I came into high school when I was a freshman I'd post things to get likes on Instagram. I think everyone has had some point where they post something because they they want to get likes on Instagram. I typically post at night like eight o'clock nine o'clock. I do that just because like I know that is a popular time. Even my friends will be like I only got like Oh, like 500 likes, oh, I have to delete it. <laughs> whether, whether it is sort of subconsciously or not, I think, I think a lot more people compare themselves to how other people are doing on social media than are willing to perhaps admit it. I mean, I think people attempt to feel, you know, appear happy because they want everybody to think their life is great or because, you know, everyone is, you know, a, a lot of the students talked about how social media, you know, like Facebook and Instagram, it's like a 
it's like a success competition. You know, everybody's competing. It's a popularity competition. It's like you're showing off like, look at my like new clothes, like look at my new car, like look at my new vacation. A lot of people definitely are obsessed with how many likes they get or like how many views and uh, you know, they get jealous of other people who have more likes or views and stuff like that. There's a way in which everyone I spoke with was talking about how hard they're working to master an, a happy image. Like they're working really hard to manipulate their images online so they appear happy. Well, what happens to your real life when, you know, there's this kind of disconnect between all this appearing happy and witnessing so much happiness all the time and then like here you are in your life and you're like, in your sweatpants and you know you've like just rolled out of bed and everybody's looking so glamorous. It's been about two hours without having my phone near me and I'm not gonna lie I've reached for it several times. I've done that little oh no where is it and it's not there obviously. I thought it would feel a lot different than I actually do feel. I kind of went into it blind, put my phone in the briefcase, and then got home and was like, oh shoot, this is real. So we'll see how that goes. I'm very actually excited, and I think that says a lot that I know I have a problem. Like, I know a lot of us are addicted. Do you think that you are addicted to your phone? Um, I don't think I'm addicted to my phone. I'm not, like, addicted to my phone. Personally, I don't think so. I do not think I'm addicted to my phone not an addiction. I, I don't think I am personally. It's just like something I always need to have on me, just, I don't know. Anyone who says they aren't, even just a little bit, is just lying to you. The vast majority of the students I interviewed for my research feel addicted to some degree, like they feel compelled in a way that makes them upset. I believe I wholeheartedly depend and am addicted to my phone. I rely on it for the majority of things I do throughout the day. It's just something that's so ingrained in our daily lives that we just always have it on us and whenever we need to use it, it's always there for us to use. Like when you get like a like or something or like, or someone like follows you and you're like, wow, like it, it makes you feel like a little, like it looks, makes you feel good even though that sounds bad, but. Students spoke a lot about likes and just this rush that they get if they you know if they put up a picture and suddenly it like it's very successful and there's like a ton of likes and they talked about how they feel this like zap of happiness there's kind of like an addictiveness to checking it that it's just kind of habit that i have to keep going back to it if i hear a buzz then i pick it up to see what's my notification or what's happening for me like i use it i know i use it too much and i continuously hate myself for it but like i don't stop doing it. How do you feel when you're without your phone? Honestly, naked. Sometimes it's like, just feels like a part of me is missing. Kind of anxious, to be honest. I mean, I always want to know what's going on. <laughs> Empty, I guess. Um, I guess I feel kind of anxious without it. It's, it's not that I need to be on it, just I like to have it with me. I feel like when it's not on me, I do kind of get a little anxious just because I'm like looking for it, but I don't have to be using it. I'm, I'm usually fine. Uh, I feel like something's missing. I feel like there's just something missing when I don't have my phone. So relief, constant relief. I, I, I long for days of no phones. I don't think it's good that we feel that addicted, that we literally cannot have it not on our person. I think it's just the constant anxiety of your phone being on you at all times and then it's just not there. It's kind of like a lifeline. It's like, it's basically what it is. Like if, if you call someone and they don't answer, you like think you assume they're dead. I think that like we are so indulged in our phones that like we can't even have fun. I don't think that I could go without it. A lot of people couldn't. When I'm in a Snapchat group chat, like I'll even sometimes like stay up a little bit later than it, like I would normally just like see what's going on in there and like make sure I'm in it. Like even the other night in one of my Snapchat group chats, they were talking about like Star Wars, which I have no opinion on at all. I've never seen any Star Wars, but I was still getting in there. Sleep is the one thing that really gets disrupted. Um, but the way that presents is not just, you know, falling asleep in school or, or not being able to get out of bed in the morning, um, but really in anxiety and depression. Whether it's the result of being up all night or being up late um, with the phone, whether it's the result of having the phone near them at night so that if 
something comes in in the middle of the night, they're actually woken up by it. Um, so they get poor quality sleep or whether it's the content of what they're doing, social media or whatever, that's leading to that anxiety and sort of poor sleep. Um, it's unclear. It's probably a mixture of all three. Last night I went to bed at 8.30. That was fantastic. Feels great. Like I actually feel alive today. Normally I'd sit up on my phone like till like 12, 1, like 2 a.m. sometimes when it's like the worst case. Just like doing absolutely nothing. But the thought of going to sleep and missing whatever was going on on Snapchat was just too much for me. So basically FOMO is the acronym fear of missing out. And usually it happens through Snapchat if like your friends post a video of them all together like laughing and stuff and like you're not there. Which kind of sucks. I mean, to be honest. Like last year, like if I like wasn't able to go out or I had work or something and then I'd get home and be like on my phone, you know, up updating myself on what happened. I'd like sit there and be like, oh, like I wish I was there. But like if I didn't see all those stories, I really wouldn't care as much. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, like that seems like so much fun. There is also this, this downside, um, which is, oh, I, you know, I see that all my friends went to a party and didn't invite me and I feel lonely and unpopular and horrible about myself, you know, friendless. When we post something or send a, a tweet or a text, um, we have to re remember that um, there's a sender-receiver issue and you may be sending something as a joke that the receiver receives as hurtful. And so I think that we need to just really be thoughtful about how we are changed and how those around us are changed by the media we use and how we use them. And it's kind of made me more judgmental. Like having an Instagram, having all the social media, like it gives so many other people access to your life and they think like they know you and stuff and then you think that you need to keep up this like persona of who you are online. Like it's, it's just kind of sad. It's definitely kind of a struggle with coordinating rides with my sister after school or like for work I have to clock in on my phone so every day I have to go in and ask them to clock in for me which I don't think they love. Now without my phone it's like music is really hard to listen to because your phone's something that you have on with you so like whenever you just want to like pop in earbuds and listen to some music that's what you do and since that's not there I have to carry around a 2007 iPod shuffle that's bright pink. Earlier this week, we went to Boston Children's Hospital to interview a specialist, and we couldn't use our phones to navigate our way there, so we had to print out the directions on MapQuest, and it ended up taking us this strange, out-of-the-way route that took over an hour when it should have taken, like, 35 minutes. I think my parents have definitely noticed a difference, and I've kind of noticed it, too, that I'm definitely, like, 10 times more talkative than like I was before. Last weekend I went on a road trip to Pennsylvania with my mom and that was like a seven hour drive but it was kind of nice just sitting there. We, were, we chatted a lot, we listened to some podcasts and audiobooks and normally I'd be sitting headphones in like completely zoned in on whatever's on my phone, snapchatting, just like wasting away the seven hours but it was kind of nice being able to like sit and chat She'd probably be talking to me the whole time and I just like wouldn't respond because I just kind of would want to tune her out and be on my phone or like listen to headphones. She even said how like different it was just sitting at meals with me. I'm not like constantly like trying to check what's on my phone. So that was definitely nice. If I had to answer in a global way what the most detrimental effect is, it would be that it reduces our connectedness with each other in deep ways and we substitute being on social media for being really together. I think we lost a lot when friend became a verb and these are not friends that you can reach out to in the middle of the night and cry on the shoulder of. And we need to really think about what is meaningful to us and what really sustains us. Um, and it's not the marketing of self that happens on social media. It's, it's the connections with people who love you for who you are, warts and all. Most of the time, if they're walking down the hall and they're just, their time is unoccupied, they're on their phone, you know, just looking, scrolling through something, what, what have you. Um, and I, you definitely notice it in the cafeteria. You, you notice it when, when students actually have an opportunity to speak to each other. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We have allowed this amazing tool, um, which gives us incredible connectivity, to actually reduce our connectedness with each other to come between us 
um, and really interfere with the kind of meaningful connectedness um, we can have if we essentially take the risk of intimacy that this protects us from. There's no more small talk because everybody knows what's going on in everyone's life because they're looking at what's going on all the time and so no one knows what to say. Like I noticed that some of my friends can't hold a conversation like just back and forth for like more than a minute because they don't know how to talk without their phone. When I'm with my friends half the time they're just like on Twitter or just like and it's like I haven't seen you all week just talk to me just love me. You can't get on a bus or a train or in an elevator without people pulling out their phones because God forbid they actually look at you or say hello or connect with you. I'd say there's a lot of anger um, in terms of feeling like we have to be available 24-7 now, that there's a kind of, I hear a lot of study, students in my study talk about how it's as if we're all surgeons, you know, like we're all on call now. You have people that you just don't want to talk to and it's harder to like filter those people out as much as you could on like talking to them because they can just communicate with you anytime. Even if it's your best friend or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whoever it may be, you do need time away from each other because if they're with each other through phone or not all the time, it, it's just bound to create some tension of some sort. Ultimately, we need each other to survive. We need each other to move forward. And um, if we are substituting you know, posts on our Facebook page for really connecting with each other, we are voluntarily giving up perhaps the most meaningful parts of our lives. I think one of the main things I learned about this coming out of it is that I notice it so much more now. When I'm in any social setting, whether it be in school, at work, anywhere I am, like I notice it immediately. I would say about 99% of the classroom use of phones is, is uh, for things that shouldn't be going on in the first place. I use my phone all the time during school, ex like except when, if there's a class, we're taking a test or a quiz, obviously I won't use it. But other than that, unless a teacher's like really strict about it, and even then, I'm like I'll just like sneaky do it. If I finish my independent work during class, during passing periods, and during lunch, it kind of serves as a distractor. There are times where a cell phone could be useful to the curriculum, but the majority of the time, and the way that my students tend to use the cell phones, is not very productive. Um, if like a group message is like blowing up with like I don't know some like drama or whatever, uh, it would definitely it can distract me. The distraction to me in every aspect of daily life. Nowadays I have my phone in my hand more than I have a pencil and paper. They have looked at assessment scores um, when a student has a cell phone with them and when a student does not have a cell phone with them and it is very telling that um, cell phones, not even being used but just being in your pocket has a major negative effect on your grades. When like I think of like putting it like away or like putting it in a parking lot, like I'm, I like freak out. I'm like no, like cause I, it's just like the thought of like it being like near me, so I can like always just check it. Not like the fact that I always have to be on it though. It's kind of bad, but like sometimes I put my phone case in the pouch, and like you're supposed to put your phone in there, but I just put my case because like I want to go on my phone. And like now I realize that was like a really immature thing to do, but like in the moment. I just want to check my phone. We're not going to be able to stop technology. I'm not going to be able to stop it from coming into my classroom, and nor should I want to. But I think that making use of those opportunities and appropriately using them and teaching students how to appropriately use them will kind of be the most beneficial thing that we can do. A lot of people use their phones because there's like classroom, Google Docs, like Google Drive, like, um, and those are really useful because a lot of teachers post like assignments and like uh, agendas of the day like on it. We can basically start and complete and turn in all of our assignments and this is great because we can get our homework done so conveniently but it's also super dangerous because notifications like text, Instagram and Snapchat can pop up while you're doing your homework and they will pop up and then one minute you're doing your homework and the next you're deep into Instagram and you really don't know how you got there. I like to think that phone use does not affect how long it takes to do my homework, but it probably does take me a little bit longer if I have my phone on me. It used to take me a really long time. I used to, I'm in bed at three sometimes. If I just put my phone down and I focused, I'd be able to get my homework done in half the time, but I just get so distracted and 
bored. Definitely I've been more productive, like started cleaning my room the other day. Normally I don't do that, didn't finish, but you know, it's a work in progress. Other things like my homework, I find myself getting it done a lot earlier. I would say I probably spend more time on my phone than doing the actual homework. <laughs> I think a lot of times the, the, the pendulum of history swings back and forth and sometimes when things are very extreme there's kind of this natural correction that takes place. So I think we're starting to realize that we are missing out on, on real life sometimes and we're missing out on genuine interactions and I think there's, there's now been a push where the pendulum is starting to come back to the center where people are realizing I need to, I need to regulate myself better. I do think a lot of people rely heavily on their phone and social media and texting and this, that, and the other thing, every single app out there that um, is getting getting to a point where it's like, eh, maybe, maybe we should talk about this. But I think the real secret is starting to be mindful in our uses of these tools and really focus those uses on the things that these tools do well and recognize that putting them down and doing other things is actually part of a rich and diverse menu of experience that we should all have. I genuinely get concerned about the, the youth of today and how they are growing up with cell phones. I, I, I think we're in for a rude awakening um, at some point when, um, when, when, when the, there's a tipping point. Um, I think that we are eventually going to reach. And um, I really could see a, sta a time when when we will make the decision that phones should not be used in school. So it is March 1st and we have our phones back. Just holding it in my hands the first time felt so weird. I forgot what it was like. Now I, I, don't, I don't really like having it on me because I've become so accustomed to not having it. It's kind of just taken a weight off my shoulders in a way. And I feel like if I go back, it's just all gonna go back to the way it was before. Being without my phone for so long has helped me realize when it's appropriate to be using social media. I think this project has definitely been eye-opening for me just in terms of showing myself that I'm really, I really don't need to be on my phone all the time and I don't need it on my person all the time. I don't know, I just don't want it. As a culture, I think we have to do a lot of thinking about like who, who do we want to be? Like what kinds of people do we want to be? Like do we want to look each other in the eyes when we're talking or are we just going to forego that all together? And like your generation is going to have to decide those things. Why did she comment that? Hey, follow me on Instagram. I didn't get enough likes on that Let me follow her spam. Help me capture this. We're going to lose our streak.